Okay, well, good morning, and thanks for joining us on today's FME webinar on how we can improve data exchange with Intergraph products. My name is Dale Lutz. I am a co-founder of Safe Software, and I'm joined today by Steve McCabe. Good morning, everyone. All right, well, thanks very much for joining us. I do know that we're up against the arrival of William and Kate landing in Canada at uh, 11 Pacific time, and so we know that many of you will want to watch that right afterwards, so we're <laughs> going to do our best to finish on time. And um, there you can see pictures of Steve and I. <laughs> yeah. Steve has much better hair than I do, but at this stage of my life, I'm happy for any hair at all. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Dale. Okay, so uh, as well, we, uh, we have a couple of other people joining us today. Uh, as, uh, as you may be familiar with the webinars, we have the ability to you guys to send in little questions and chats with us, so we, uh, we welcome those. Uh, so we have Ryan Craig, he's a product support engineer with Safe Software, and Robin Rennie, another product support specialist. Ryan is well known for doing many of the online... Oh, I guess we had... Um... Are we catching any audio? Is everybody... See... Yeah? Yes. It's okay, good. it's all good? Okay. All good. All right, did we have the slide up before of uh, ourselves? Is that... I think we're okay. So um, <laughs> I also wanted to mention that uh, Steve is well qualified to be giving this webinar on Intergraph and FME. Because Steve, how long have you uh, been working with Intergraph products in your career? Uh, Ten years I spent with Intergraph. I was with them for five years in Canada, and then I moved over to England and spent another five years with them over there. Hardly any British accent at all, though. No, I didn't absorb any of that. I don't think I left any behind either for the uh, Brits that I worked with either. So during that time, you covered the whole, pretty much the whole Intergraph uh, family suite. I spent a lot of time uh, in Canada with the Jew Media side of the business. Yep. So working with Jew Media Pro and whatnot, and a lot of work with Spatial uh, using uh, that product with the Jew Media products. And then when I went to England, I primarily was on the G Technology side of the business. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, today we'll be able to tap into some of Steve's experience there as we look at some of those various various products. Um, as we mentioned, we do have a couple other SAFERs joining us. At any time, don't be afraid to pipe up on the chat, and they'll be happy to answer you. And if we can't answer you today, we'll be getting back to you as soon as we can after the, after the webinar. So, questions, sorry, and the questions thing. <laughs> Okay, so just to go over the agenda here, we're going to keep this under an hour. Uh, we're going to have 15 minutes, a brief introduction to Safe Software and FME, and then we're going to have a few demos along the way, um, some tips on uh, FME and how we can uh, work with the Intergraph data sources. And then uh, at the end of it, we're going to have hopefully about 10 minutes left to, to open the floor to any of the questions you want to send in through the, uh, the chat interface. On the question the, interface. The question interface. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, you don't want to get those mixed up, I guess. Yeah, that's right. So, okay. All right. All right. So, and as well, we're going to be giving away um, ten free seats are uh, up for grab for these online training sessions. So we got a course coming up on. Uh, I'll do the bottom one first. July twenty first, we got the FME for spatial databases. That's the Oracle Spatial uh, targeted towards Oracle Spatial. We definitely recommend some FME experience before taking that one. Um, and then the FME desktop, that's going to be on July 26th, 27th. So uh, we're going to be offering these seats up uh, a little bit later in the show. So I guess the, um, the FME desktop one is kind of an intro thing, and the, the one on Oracle Spatial would let you dig right in and find out a lot of things that people don't know FME can do for things like Oracle Spatial, like doing updates and deletes and all those other fancy database things. Yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, Dale, I think you're up here. Uh oh, so I've got to figure out how to launch a poll. We thought we'd start off by getting to know our audience a little bit better. And uh, at this point, I'll ask the question, what Intergraph products do you work with and have to move data in, out, in and out of? So um, you can go ahead and answer that, and we'll watch the results pour in. We have a poll coming up here in BC, an HST referendum. So I wonder if it'll be as exciting as, as this, uh, except that that's being done by mail, and our mail has just gone off strike. So that's... Uh, <laughs> should help the, those results come in as well. I do like to see that there are people out there using from A, as we say in Canada. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, that's good to see. And uh, specify, probably they should specify via the question, not the chat. So I'm going to get back at my poll writers, <laughs> since they were correcting me earlier. Um, so do let us know the other. I know that one thing that Steve and I really wanted to put on there was MGE. 
Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> actually, MGE was the first Intergraph thing Safe supported many years ago. Uh, when Mark Doherty was a young lad and I was too, he managed to make a deal and get us a copy of MGE so we could support it. Seriously, if you do use FME with MGE, please let us know that in a question because we are actually doing some maintenance on that. So I think we're ready to uh, close the polls now and we'll share the results. And uh, there they are. I think folks out there can see them. Steve can't, but no, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, GeoMedia is very heavily represented, as we would expect. Um, I, to be honest with you, I am surprised how many frame yeah. people there are, and uh, I think you actually have some frame stuff you're going to be talking. Yeah. About. Just uh, we got a little demo coming up, uh, a little bit of getting uh, some data out of the frame system and being able to write out to other formats. So. GTech with a good representation, and then the the CAD people there as well. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting to see that. So that's good. We're going to be uh, talking a little bit about CAD later in the show. That's right. And CAD, of course, is a safe uh, a double meaning. <laughs> yeah, that's right. At, uh, I guess at the recent Hexagon show, you had uh, quite uh, confusion uh, around your booth with the CAD t-shirts you were giving away. That's right. It was good because people that thought we were talking about MicroStation were happy, and the people that thought we were talking about Dispatch were happy, too. <laughs> so that was great. So that's that's wonderful. And so we'll hide those results and uh, and just talk a little bit about safe software. For those that don't know, we're a private company. Um, we're, we're not really in downtown Vancouver, which means when the riots break out, we're very safe here. It's safe. Uh, we're way out in the suburbs, and uh, when the riots break out, all the suburb people that want to riot are definitely not out here. So, so that's good. We have about 90-ish uh, employees. Um, I was just looking at our worldwide representation, kind of a, a map, appropriately enough, right. and I'm amazed at the global coverage that we do have. FME is used just about everywhere other than the axis of evil, so that's, that's a good thing. And, um, and literally thousands of customers. So that's a little bit of background about us. As it says there, we were around since 93, and it wasn't long after that that we actually supported MGE. It was very early in our history. Great. Okay. So, uh, so here's our, our main goal. Our main goal is to achieve total spatial data mastery, and uh, that's being uh, done by the use of the FME. Yes, the feature manipulation engine. That's right. I like to say that you can use FME to put data in its place. And, <laughs> uh, and that's uh, what we're really about here. And, and how we can apply that or work with that within the Intergraph environment is what we will hope to accomplish today. Okay. All right. So, um, so here's the, the FME technology capabilities. So FME really sits in the middle of uh, many different data types. It provides an environment for letting you to transform the data as you move between these data types. Um, a lot of people think of FME uh, as a click, click, transform your data kind of thing, and, uh, but there's really a lot more to FME than just that. That's just a small portion of what we can do with FME. I know, Steve, in your experience, you mentioned that you were aware of FME for many years, but you never really understood the depth of all the things it could do until relatively recently. That's right, absolutely not. I had, uh, I had a little bit of playtime with FME and small little jobs and, and really did not understand the, the, the vast uh, capability of the transformers involved in the workbench. So. Right, so hopefully today uh, those of you tuning in will get a chance to, to get, get a taste of the kinds of productivity and uh, time saving you can get by, by using FME. One other thing about this chart, there's a whole bunch of different data types represented there. Um, 3D is one that I'll just kind of give a teaser to. I know there's GeoMedia 3D. We have worked with Intergraph to support that for them and with them. And at the very end, we'll show a little, little uh, sneak about some of the stuff you can do with FME and 3D as well. All right. Thanks, Dale. Okay, so one of the core, the key uh, components of all data translations is the data transformations. And, and here we have a schema that is the front and center of, of all those, uh, of all that. And, and so Depending on the, how the data is being represented in the GIS system, or maybe you're working with CAD data, um, perhaps who owns the data? Uh, maybe you've got a public database that you want to make available to the to the public users, or you have a production database for inside your corporation that needs to be hidden away. There's often many different GISs involved in a, in a lot of these environments. Uh, you may have uh, competing vendors in, involved, and you want to be able to interchange data smoothly. And, and so FME is at the front and center of that. That is really where we can come in and help you move data between those environments. Yep. 
So it's so many things that can be done. Um, if, if folks just think of FME as only solving a format problem, they're really shortchanging what's possible. This particular little example, which runs through a, a schema mapper, would be really doing a very amazing uh, rearranging of attributes and renaming and so on. And in this case, the schema mapper is a blue transformer that actually draws its configuration from an external spreadsheet where all these mappings can be done. And for those doing G technology, that's a very common scenario. Okay, so at SAFE we have a couple of core products. We have the FME desktop and the FME server. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about FME server. But first, we have another poll question coming up. Yes, we do. So the poll question is, we want to get to know a little bit more about what kind of databases those of you out there are using. So I've got the poll going right now. Oracle off to a heavy lead early. Um, Actually, it's, uh, Oracle maintains its lead, but oh, Access pulling ahead. It's pretty exciting to watch these, these uh, come in. We've got pretty good turnout at our polls. 81% have uh, tuned in. But it looks like Oracle really, and that, I'm not too surprised that Intergraph has worked well with Oracle for a long, long time. And I think um, we'll go ahead and close the polls with 88% turnout. Oh, nope, 90. Okay, I think that's a sign that we should uh, say that that's good. And I'll share the results for you all to see. So Oracle heavily, uh, heavily winning. Um, SQL Server picking up the bottom end. I, I'm going to be curious. Um, if those of you that said other, please do chat in. And Robin is giving me the nod that we're hearing about that. I'm going to be curious if it's PostGIS, MySQL. Oh, it was PostGIS. I'm getting a, a nod there. We do see a lot of PostGIS in our travels at SAFE. But not surprisingly, Oracle uh, picking yep. up the top here. And I think, uh, Steve, you're going to be showing some Oracle today? Yeah, or? I'm going to be showing a, a little Oracle workspace and, and uh, making use of uh, the SQL executor and how we can update some metadata that uh, supports the Geomedia. Right. And actually, we had that Oracle uh, class coming up, too, so I think that might be of interest to some of these, these folks as well. Yeah, that's right. OK, so just to go back into what uh, FME Desktop and the components here, um, it's really a graphical authoring environment uh, for data restructuring tasks. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple to use, point and click, easily to define spatial data flows to translate and transform and integrate your data. So, you know, I'll open up, uh, I'll just bring this across and show everybody. Oh, there it's edging onto the screen. Yeah. So this is, this is, this is a blank workspace here, blank canvas, and, and this is really our authoring tool that allows us to, you know, um, put in our transformers and show the data flow on that. So, so we're going to be coming into this a bit more, and you'll see a lot more of this. But this is the authoring tool that uh, we used that uh, sends our, uh, creates our translations that we use with FME Engine. Yeah, that's where most, most uh, FME users spend a lot of their time setting things up. And then other folks can go ahead and run those. They don't, you don't have to know Workbench to run someone else's configuration. As well, these configurations can be run from the command line later on, too, or pushed up to a server to be run there. That's right. OK. The next integral part uh, to what we use with FME Desktop is the Universal Viewer and Data Inspector. And I'll just uh, quickly bring that up. Um, it really, really, what we're seeing here is a, a tool that just allows you to view the data um, to view the data. Just peeking through there, Steve. Okay, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, that allows us to see the data the way the FME sees it. And what's powerful about that is, is because FME can connect to so many different data sources, uh, it just allows us to look at that data, view that data, understand that data, so um, how we can do it. And it's just as easily, like I'm going to open up a little, little classic V7 file. Yeah, that's right. I'm just going to change this to level names. but. Uh, Actually, I was talking to somebody yesterday. V7 files are the second fastest format that FME can read, uh, the first being the FFS. But uh, you know, a format that was designed for PDP-11, really, we have no excuse not to read it quickly, I'd say. Yeah. There so, it comes. So here's uh, some of the sample data that we work with on a regular basis. We don't have very many colors uh, uh, up here now. But this is, this is the viewer. It's not meant to be a GIS. It's not meant to be any analysis tool. It's really just used for looking at our data. We can click on a feature here and get all the information on that. Let's see, and double click on a coordinate. I always Yeah, like that. yeah, that's a good idea. So if we click on a coordinate here, we can actually see where, where, we're, where we're using that. And, you know, 
this is a simple uh, geometry, but sometimes you get complex geometries with holes and whatnot, and so it really gets you to understand. Well, what I like to say, this, this thing here, when we started out at SAFE, we did not intend to make a data inspector or, or at all. Um, it, this was a weekend project that Don did a long time ago that kind of got a life of its own because where FME sits in the food chain is that we're always guilty until proven innocent. <laughs> so everybody's data, of course, and I know all of you tuning in, your data is all perfect, um, but, uh, but from time to time, even perfect data does go off the rails here and there, and usually FME is to blame, and so by showing people that actually maybe their perfect little sons and daughter data isn't quite so perfect by looking at it in the inspector or the viewer, that lets them understand really the universe they're working in and do a better job. So the key is really seeing what you have to work with, all the pieces that you have to work with, the state of it, and then being able to use that as you move forward. The other thing is it lets you verify that after you're done the translation, you really have what you think you have. That's a key point. Like uh, you, We can put in a transform in the middle of the translation and show as we go through the process what the data is looking like, how it's changing, and, and being yeah. affected by the transformers we're yeah. using. So. so it is handy in a spatial situation to be able to view things. Yeah. We've got another poll already? Yeah, it looks like it. So what's this one, Steve? This is, this is uh, we're just trying to understand the 3D data. So how many of you plan to be working with 3D data in the next 18 months? Now, we've got a few options there. So 6, 12, 18 months, no plans at this time. Well, so. quite a few that are already doing 3D. Okay. okay. Well, look at that. So uh, the, the no plans took an early lead, but, um, but they're, they're now in the minority. So um, we've put a lot of effort into 3D at SAFE over the last uh, really three years. And um, we have a very good infrastructure for manipulating and translating and moving 3D around and are very excited to be working with the Intergraph folks on Geomedia 3D. So this is gratifying to see that many of you, a quarter of the folks already um, working. So I'm going to close the polls there. Um, very good turnout today for the polls there, 92%. And um, we can see that uh, quite like a, a majority, a plurality, yeah. actually, we could say, um, do. Uh, do intend to be working with it in the next 18 months, and many of them uh, underway already. So at the end, we'll, we'll take a peek at some of the stuff in Geomedia 3D. All right. OK, so here's what we get coming up next now. We're going to get back into the, the core part of the presentation at, with uh, working with Intergraph. So uh, a little bit about FME and Intergraph. Uh, we're going to discuss the Intergraph readers and writers that are available. We're also going to talk about a well-known secret, uh, the Geomedia FME GDO, something that I wasn't yes. too familiar with. Uh, before coming here. And, and then we're going to have a little bit of uh, information on FME and G technology. Actually, that's more utilities based because we're, we're showing a frame demo there. Um, and then we're going to talk about the ICAT uh, initiative and then uh, FME server and a little bit of GME web map. Right. That's a good thing to, to touch on. Yeah. Okay. Well, as we kind of hinted, we've been working with Intergraph almost since the beginning of SAFE. Um, and uh, very pleased to, and, and I actually uh, have been fortunate enough, I think, to pretty much every Intergraph mapping show that there's been, um, in the modern era anyway, I've, uh, I've been wow. to. So it's, uh, it's been great, and I always appreciate the Intergraph hospitality. And we have a good relationship with Intergraph uh, resellers and distributors all around the world. In fact, Intergraph is a reseller of FME, as well as having uh, at least two or maybe three different OEM relationships in a few different parts of their product family. Yeah, and I know, I know uh, as well. Working with some of my, or talking with some of my ex-colleagues uh, and friends, they're they're using FME now. Then it's starting to be uh, utilized a lot more. We got some people in England using it, and some folks down in uh, in the states for sure working with some larger projects with G technology and stuff. So, in fact, Steve, you were telling me yesterday that the first time you ever used FME was to. Uh, what was that again? It was actually to take some GML into an access database. Well, uh, I know Don Murray uh, will be pleased to hear that since he loves, he loves GML and XML. In fact, right now in England, I think he's talking about that at the Inspire conference. But So you brought her into Access and then did some post-processing afterwards. Yeah, we actually were making an application to uh, do some uh, node locating to uh, uh, line networks for, for finding our costs of the lengths of pipes and lines. Right, right, right. And the seed data was coming out of um, what was master map, yeah, I guess, that's right, yeah. in GML. Yeah. Very good? Yeah. OK, so here's an introduction to some of the readers and writers. Uh, we, we obviously support Intergraph GeoMedia Access and GeoMedia SQL Server. Those uh, basically read the metadata that GeoMedia utilizes. We write the metadata that GeoMedia utilizes in those cases. So you can easily connect to some data and push out very quickly to those formats. 
We have an uh, Intergraph MGE uh, writer, a reader. Reader and writer, writer, actually. Okay. I don't know how many folks. Actually, if you are writing to MGE, please uh, let them know via a question, because I am curious how many folks actually still are writing actively to MGE, but um, certainly we have a, a reader there. Yeah, and then obviously the Intergraph frame, we're going to be showing a custom format of that. And then uh, I think uh, you've got an interesting comment on the Intergraph yeah, frame. Yeah, Intergraph Seth. frame, Seth. What I wanted to say is if anybody out there can uh, send through the questions, uh, the first three folks that tell me what Seth stands for are going to find themselves proud owners of a T-shirt. Um, so um, right now I know that there's people searching on Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> and I don't even know if there is a Seth article there. but. Uh, do let us know, and at the end, maybe if, if uh, Steve reminds me, we'll tell you what it does stand for. Yeah, that's right. But we do we do support that for writing. I know not too many customers actually did that, but I know some folks in Brisbane um, were using that years ago to write quite complicated data actually uh, into frame. Okay, um, and then we also have the uh, the Oracle Spatial Object Model and Relational Model that uh, we write out to as well uh, with GeoMedia. <laughs> there's a, a need for a, an external. Uh, schema to support the, uh, the reading of the Oracle spatial data. And then the G technology model, uh, we can, setting a, a, set, a setting in the reader and the writer, we can uh, enhance geometry. We yeah. can actually see, um, see that data and work with that data. One of the things we didn't do ourselves any service to ourselves at SAFE regarding that is that it doesn't actually say anything about G technology in the product. It just says Oracle spatial relational. And so you have to know if you're doing GTEC that that is the thing you'd want to use if it's, I guess, version 9.x or older. That's right, yeah. And, uh, but we do a good job, thorough job, of all the different um, interpretations, shall we say, that Intergraph made of the old relational model of, uh, of Oracle. Yep. And, and least but not, uh, last but not least is the uh, GeoMedia extension. That's the FME GDO. And that's, uh, we're going we're gonna to jump right in there and have a look at that. So, okay. So I'm just going to open up this uh, first demo. So the GDO, we've, we've had that in FME for years and years and years as well. Um, a lot of folks don't even know that it's there. It lets them have direct read access to any of the formats that we support. And so, um, Steve, are you gonna, actually going to show us something there? Yeah, I'm gonna, I've got um, just a blank workspace here, but I'm just going to open up, uh, make a new connection inside GeoMedia. We can see here that I've extended the FME GDO. And this interface, this will basically allow us to have access to um, many of the different formats. I'm just going to click on this button here, and it's popped up over my main screen here. Nothing like tool screens to... Yeah, that's right. So in, in, right here, this allows us to search all the different formats um, you know, that we want to be able to work with. So if it's DGN, um, we've got that frame one there. So this basically shows the, the, the huge list of formats that uh, FME does support. Um, so I've already got a setting in here, ArcTest DE database. Uh, we can look at the parameters on that. And my dual screen has failed me again. And we can see here we've got settings connected to the databases. We have some options on here. And that's typically what all our readers will do. We'll have lots of options to be able to, to set on reading this data. So I'll make that connection. We see down here that it's connecting to that ArcSD data source. Um, I guess it removed my settings, so I'm glad I put down a bit of information here. <laughs> uh, we we so actually overhauled our network yesterday at Safe, so that's just to kind of you know keep things a little fresh for Steve. <laughs> uh oh, uh, that's not that's not good. That that'll be all right. Um, I'm glad that Steve's a, a GeoMedia expert. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So we got them back again. I just had to close that and open that up. Okay. So it wasn't persistent. So we'll close that, and that should make us a connection to the ArcSD Geo database. It's thinking about that now. Yeah. And so now, if I just come in and look at my my uh, features that I have in here, we can see here we've got our FME uh, connection, and I've got interstates. Now, the reason why we're only seeing that particular feature, I should have uh, made one more setting change here which was our table list views. Sorry, everyone. There we go. So we're going to bring this in. Ah, yes. So in here, I'm going to do a search for just Steve and C. So I've got some features in here. So I'm just going to open up a couple of these and uh, just to show that we got some information coming in from the ArcSDE database. So that's done, for those that are interested, it is done in a 
in a very efficient way. When we, when we use the GDO against SDE, we actually do use spatial searches and all that fancy stuff. So if you are zoomed into a tight area, we only pull the stuff in that, that you'd be looking at. Now, Steve's got the whole U.S. there, so it's all going to come in. But if we were looking at a smaller part of the map, it would be very efficient. To That's right, yeah. So you can see here that we've opened up that, that data. This is the U.S. sample data, which I know everybody in the graph is quite familiar with. And uh, I just basically put it into the ArcSD uh, database that's based on yeah. Oracle. So you can read. You cannot edit. Um, there is a companion thing that lets you do what we call disconnected edit uh, with SDE. But in general, the GDO is for uh, reading things across any of our, on any of our vector formats directly into GeoMedia. All right, so we don't need to say much more about that, but that's basically there showing how the uh, the GDO, yep. FME GDO, is integrated with uh, GeoMedia, and it expands GeoMedia's already pretty healthy uh, format support to further uh, um, bring in other data formats. We should have asked people if they've ever used the, the GDO. So uh, we, that would have been an interesting poll, and since I didn't uh, have yeah. a poll, please, uh, if you have used that thing, uh, fire a quick question off and because uh, we are interested in knowing and if and actually would be curious to know what format you used it for yeah that's right and I and curious to me too is how many people if you didn't know about it before how many of you did know about it yeah you know, yes because that was the thing for me I wasn't totally aware of that work on the site okay all right so the next one we got here is um, geomedia FME and Oracle Spatial I'm gonna open up the sample workspace here and uh, what are we, how are we doing for time there we're okay. Oh, we got lots of time. I can lots go off on lots of tangents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, where are we at? What's the next one, Steve? It's the uh, access to Oracle. So we're going to okay. bring that up. I'm just uh, opening it up, sharing it over. All right. So what I got here is a little bit of a workspace that I've um, put together. It's connected to, over here we have our reader connections. In this particular case, I'm connected to one source, which is the US sample data. And then I'm writing it out to the Oracle database. So this is just uh, an Oracle Spatial 10, uh, might be 11G on this one. Um, so I've just se selected a few features. I've put them, uh, some of them straight out through. But then for state labels, I've uh, done a bit of work in here to set some attributes. Um, so that it's, it writes out to the correct format okay. in the Oracle Special Database. So we've got a few attribute setters. Oh, well, I see. You're, you're fixing up text, basically. Yeah. That must have been text, and you're just setting it up nicely to go to Oracle. That's right. So here's the three uh, th uh, attributes that I'm setting yep. for, for yep. recognition. So as Oracle doesn't support the text out of the box or orientation, this here allows you to make some settings from your sources and put it into the Oracle. And then uh, what we're also doing in this workspace, which is something that's pretty um, pretty unique. I'm not sure if anybody else has, has done this before with FME and, and the Oracle Spatial with the GeoSys metadata. If you have, please put in a question. Um, but essentially what I'm doing here is I'm taking advantage of uh, Chuck Woodbury's uh, GeoMedia Oracle object model uh, package that uh, has different utilities in there for managing the GeoSys metadata. Okay, so you somehow you got that from Chuck and you've downloaded it and you install it into your Oracle. That's right. So now there's that GOOM thing. Is that how you yep, pronounce it? Yeah, that's right. So it's say GOOM or GOM. GOM. Uh, okay. Maybe we should ask Chuck what the, what he thinks about that. Yeah. So yeah. So basically, in here, I'm I'm running an SQL statement to the database that's passing in our feature types. Yeah, and and I determine what the feature type uh, oh, ge see. geometry yeah. is, and uh, I'm creating a sequence here and sending that in. And I think on this particular instance, oh, here's the geometry type that I'm setting. Yeah. So FME can determine the geometry type it's working with. We can then pass that to the Oracle database, pass that to this package or procedure uh, of charts, yeah. and set the GDOS metadata. Well, that's a lot easier than doing it all by hand. Uh. <laughs> Either that, well, they do have the Intergraph does have the database utilities that right. you can go in afterwards and set this stuff up manually. I know myself for simple features, it's it's you know if you put in a hundred new features and you got to update that metadata, it, it takes a lot of effort. Um, there are tools in GeoMedia that allows you to export the Oracle object model directly, uh, but sometimes there might be reasons why you want to have this automated yeah. off to the side away from GeoMedia that yeah. you're not manually running it. And something like this would allow you to do that. So what the stuff is in that little bookmark is basically picking out one of each of the, of the types and then you can use that to inject that, to fire off that SQL. That's right. So, um, so if I just run this quickly. Oh, wow, you're going to go live with this. 
Yeah, I, I wasn't going to, but I'm, I'm feeling kind of brave now. Just, um, just because our network was down yesterday, it's always good to uh, reload things. Yeah. And I'm just going to make a new connection. And really, you know, there's nothing as exciting as watching a log file go by. I like to say to people that that's like a <laughs> symphony unfolding before your eyes. And there's nothing like the statistics at the end. And I like how it tells us twice that it successfully closed the GeoMedia Access Reader. You see that? It tells oh, us twice. Oh, twice. Make sure that we've done that. Yeah. So and it tells us twice that it translation was successful as well. So I, you know, we want to really make sure that you know. Yeah. And so what are you doing now, Steve? Uh, I'm trying to locate the workspace oh, that I want to open. There's something that's popped up up there. Is that? Yeah. I'll take that back across. Oh, he's doing track. stuff that you can't see. Yes. Um, what I'm trying to find is my workspace. Um, You're speaking of a GeoMedia workspace now, are you? Yeah. It's. Um, I thought I copied it. GWS. This will be it. Now what's he doing? Okay. So now is this? Oops, we can't see it yet. Not yet. No, it he's he's waiting for the big reveal. Okay. All right. So uh, I can see it. Yes, this is the one. All right. I've kind of pre-canned this so that we don't have uh, things. I'm just going to make some more real estate for us. And now now across. comes the big reveal. Okay. All right. So this is the U.S. sample data. If we get rid of all that, and we just uh, open up our connections here, I've got a, a connection set to that uh, already. Uh, I'm going to open that connection. And now I'm going to display that information to our uh, underwear interface. So we'll go to there and we'll pick up what we... Uh, just, this is just what you loaded a few seconds ago? Yeah, that's right. So what else we got? This is the FME ones, are the features I created in okay. that workspace. Yeah. So I'm just going to oh, load those up. Uh, yeah. I think we got them all. And then we'll see that coming in. Uh, so this is hitting an oracle somewhere in the safe confines? That's right, it is. So okay. as you can see, the data is not very pretty, but that's the data that we just moved, moved across, and we can, uh, we can we can throw some uh, U.S. sample data up here just for comparison of the data. So I yep. got down to the bottom here, and we can see that we got our, okay. our information in. So anyway, it was just that easy to to load some stuff up into Oracle, and then bang, it's ready to go for Jumi. That's right, right away. Okay. Great. Great. Um, now we'll move on to our next demonstration, which is FME SQL Server. I'm just going to open up a workbench file here. It's wow, so we're going right from Oracle to SQL Server. Yep. You know what Don likes to say at SAFE is that format is irrelevant. And uh, to some degree that's true. The exact same stuff that you show here that folks can see at home um, showing Oracle, really it's very, very similar when you go to do SQL Server. So let's see what Steve's got for us. Okay, here it comes. All right, so here's another workspace. Again, very simple. Um, this one here, we have um, the same features, or pretty well same similar features. A little bit of work we got to do with the text features again to bring them across out to there. Yeah. This one here, I'm going to run live as well. What the heck? I know the data is not in this particular workspace right now. The in the um, GeoMedia side or the SQL. In the GeoMedia side, I, I, I'm writing this live right now, and I actually wanted to show everybody that this was being written live, but uh, you forgot to bring it up empty. I, I forgot to bring it bring it up empty. So in here, which I'll share in a second, I've got a connection to my SQL Server database. So we'll just uh, let that happen. So, okay. Yes, this is a SQL Server. So we can see now. I've warehouse. only got two features coming. Uh, I've only got two features in here at the moment. I right. just refreshed this connection just to show yeah. everybody what we're yeah. doing. And in a second, we'll have uh, the rest of those features. So in this one, we don't have to do any fiddling around manually with metadata because this one is an actual GeoMedia tailored writer inside of FME. That's right. This this was that's very good. This one is actually showing us the ability of FME to write directly to the GeoMedia SQL Server database. And so what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to reopen that connection. As everybody knows, that's cache that information. So I'm going to reopen that. And now I'm going to bring across the GeoMedia, and we'll open up that data from SQL Server. You know, I, I'm going to offer another T-shirt to somebody. The first person to tell me why in SAFE, uh, if you flip back to your workbench just for a second, um, we call these native GeoMedia things, we call them FM0. And nobody at SAFE <laughs> actually knows where that FM0 comes from. So the first person to tell me that will get themselves a T-shirt as well. Um, do, you, do you actually know? I that? actually don't know. Okay. <laughs> So we'll, we'll, uh, well, whoever's a good BSer might win this too then because we have no way to know um, what it really is. But 
anyway, if there's, for some reason, there's a naming convention that's safe about that. So um, what, do you, what do you have there now for, as far as GeoMedia goes? Did it, did it actually come in? Yep. It's all there. That's, the, that's right from the SQL Server database. So okay. So if we, uh, we want to click on one of these features, we can see this is uh, connected to the SQL Server yep. on the, the mall system we got here, and here's all our features. The mall system. That's a dark system, I think. Yeah. It's just one of our Sith servers. Okay. Uh, I just want to see... Yeah, I've only got a read-only connection to that database at the moment, but yeah. uh, sure, if we made that read-write, read, read we could actually inter uh, we start could, working with that data right away with media. Okay. All right, so next. Next, what's up? Um, wow, so we just did Oracle and now SQL Server. Now what are you going to do as an encore? I don't know. Uh, let's, let's see, we'll maybe making use of that FME GDO and uh, the ARC SDE. So I took, the, I took a, a workspace here and I created... Um, a little workflow to put it into the Arc SDE uh, database. And okay, so you load it. So now this is loading Arc SDE. Yeah. So and Arc SDE, you know, it has a few things on the annotations. Um, There's a theme there. Annotations are always a little bit quirky. This isn't my first time playing with it. And I didn't involve a lot of the team with it, and I got it to a point where I can actually show okay. it in GMedia or show it in Universal Viewer. So, okay. So uh, I was, uh, yeah, and you know, like I said, it was. Uh, it was pretty easy for me to get that done. So, so this is that workspace. I'm not going to run this right now. I think uh, how two, are we still two doing? out of three. We're we're, we're doing well. We, yeah. <laughs> let's call her. Let's call her good with that. And oh, uh, look at that. We had a, an answer. John Elliott, you're going to go home with a shirt. Uh, and I, I do believe this feature FM0 stands for Feature Model Zero, dating back to 1994, almost as old as Safe. Wow. So Feature Model Zero. It's sort of like Plan Nine from from outer space. Um, I wonder whatever happened to you know feature models one, two, three from then on. I guess they got it right the first time. So uh, <laughs> congratulations, Intergraph. I did not know that. I don't think anybody at Safe knows that. And so um, we've added to our corporate uh, knowledge today. And I know Jeff Hobbs wrote in uh, on Twitter and said he didn't know if he was going to tune in because he didn't know if he'd have learned anything today. Jeff Hobbs, you missed a good one. You'd have learned something. I guarantee it. Um, so I will tweet you about that later. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're back to Geo Media here. Um, the data has already been loaded in, um, and here I'm just showing that we're making use of the FME GDO. Uh, so we'll say okay to that. Actually, it's done that to me again. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a interesting set of dialogues you keep getting there, Steve. But I guess if you go in from scratch, is that? Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna close it here again, and I'll open it right back up very quickly. Sorry, everyone. I guess you have to fill in the parameters early, otherwise you get a different prompt. Yeah, I could just type the parameters in here again, but uh, I guess they're Folks all at home there. don't like watching typing generally. No, that's right. So, so this is just establishing that connection to the ArcGIS uh, or the Esri uh, Geo database. Yeah, here it comes. All right. So now we can throw that data up here. If I get to my features and just bring that up. And so, yeah, that's. That's that standard intergraph data that's been um, pushed into SDE. That's right. Yeah. So it'll come up here in a sec. So oh, there, there it is. is. Same same data, but this time coming from the um, the uh, Arc SDE database. Right. So if you need to do any kind of thing that does um, kind of underlays of, or read only things from SDE, that's pretty pretty straightforward with the GDO. Alternately, you can use FME to translate from SDE into any of those intergraph that's right. formats. Yeah. Um, there is a long story somewhere on the safe knowledge base, and if any of you are interested, send us a question. We can send you the solution. I know Robin knows where that is. That goes through all of the various ways of connecting to Esri data if you're not an Esri um, GIS desktop user. And so uh, the raw SDE requires you to have some DLLs that you would have in your, in somewhere in your administrator will have these. You just need to install what's called the SDE developers kit, I think, um, and that lets you get at points, lines, polygons, some annotation, but not the fancy arcs and other things that are only in the so-called geodatabase. If you're doing higher end kinds of things, then you need to be using the so-called geodatabase readers and writers. Those require arc objects to be lying around, um, and so they have, that means uh, there has to be a licensed ArcGIS somewhere, in, somewhere on your computer. The last thing to mention is that ESRI, or sorry, ESRI now, we can say, um, is uh, coming out with this thing called the, file, the, the Free and Clear File Geodatabase API, and that's going to let us do File Geodatabase without any Esri products anywhere in sight. 
uh, and that's actually coming into the beta of FME 2012 any, any day now. For those that don't know, we make our betas available pretty much every day. We try pretty hard. I think on average three or four a week get up there, so we're busy working away on FME 2012 already, and, uh, and the FME 2012 can already read FileG database uh, using that API, and the writing will come very quickly. I think you go to beta.safe.com if you want to try those and live on the edge. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that, Dale. Now, what do we got next here is just a little summary of what we went through. So we just showed we can write the Oracle object model, make use of the GeoSys and the GeoM package from Chuck Woodbury to keep your metadata in check for the GeoMedia applications. Uh, we also showed that we support some GeoMedia oriented text and point data types out to other formats and writing the SQL Server natively as well. And, and also out to the Azure Geo database from your from your Intergraph data sources. Uh, this next little piece we're going to go to now is going to touch on um, um, FME and utilities. And I'm just going to quickly show you guys a, a workspace here. This workspace was provided to me by from a, by a colleague. And essentially, what it's showing is th this is a pretty involved uh, workspace, but it's connecting to some frame data, some frame data source. And it allows us to um, model how we want. Now, this particular workspace here, we're actually going out to uh, to a, a custom format. Oops, I didn't want to show that. Um, but the great thing about this now is we we can save this and create a custom data format out of it. Right. So that means that this transformation, we could run this as a translation and go to say SDE or SQL Server or whatever we wanted to. If we're doing a migration, uh, but you can also sort of wrap this up and kind of tell FME, here's my own dialect of frame that I, or frame A, that I want to uh, just use wherever. So is that what you've done here, Steve? You made it into a custom format? Yeah, that's right. So this has been saved into the particular folder that FME and so sees it as. It's starting with a whole bunch of stuff, and you end up getting only pipelines and stationing points out, I guess. Yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, so what I can do here now is I can just uh, make use of this format. And I'm going to go and create a new workspace. And we we'll just go blank for here. And I'm going to add in a new reader. And this reader is going to be frame. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So really, that's, that's that whole configuration we just saw kind of wrapped up as one little line item. Yeah. So you're going to go and pick, I presume, some kind of a DGN. That's right. I've got some data in here, some frame data, DGN. And these aren't called DGN files, but they are DGN files. We'll open that, um, and that'll read those in. It's thinking about that. Okay, we're going to take those two, I guess. Yeah, and in this particular case, that workspace we were looking at really focused on these two particular yes. features. So but it's it could out all the rest. Yeah. And in FME, we're happy enough to throw away data we don't care about if, if people make that decision. That's right. So now if we close that, we've got our readers in here. And then again, we can add in any multitude of the writers and do our transformations out to these other formats. Right. So uh, that's pretty straightforward to do. Um, we will, for sake of time, we'll, we'll pass on that right now. Right. I think we showed lots of uh, writing out to data sources. But that's something that we can, uh, we can help you with. If you've got a legacy database, you've got some uh, workflows that you want to get out to, um, out to different data sources on a regular basis, we can do that. This would also be something you could do with a G technology database yes. um, as well. So See, I've seen lots of folks do this sort of stuff to go even to KML, right? to, to, uh, to take utility data, grind it down into something a little more understandable for the layperson, and then output it to KML from broader distribution. PDF, another common yeah. output format, um, kind of mapping for the masses. We think we do a workshop on that once in a while. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, so that's good. So now I'll go here. So Steve's got a nice prompt there. I think you don't want to do that. All right, so, so what else do we have to, to talk about? Okay, so um, we'll just skim over here. But again, uh, just to make the point there, if you're using geotechnology, you want to use the Oracle Spatial Relational Model Reader or a Writer, and make sure you set the enhanced geometry. Right. Okay. Um, so. Dale, FME and CAD. This is um, something that's kind of new to us here at SAFE. Yeah. Um, uh, I've obviously, with my experience at Intergraph, knew CAD well. Um, but uh, we, we have a few customers that are actually making some use of FME and, and integrating with the CAD system. Right. Supplying some data. And there's been some discussion around this. I guess at the Exagon show, you had yeah. some. Uh, so I know uh, we're talking with Judy and some others. But, but um, and, and actually, we've come across a few customers out in the wild 
that are actually well underway with using FME to streamline data flows from their typically municipal GIS systems into, into CAD. And not, not the CAD that most FME users would think of, but computer-aided dispatch. And so here's actually an example of one that, um, that we got from someone. Is this, do you know where this one came from? I, I'm not sure where this came from. Is this from you, Aaron? Oh, yeah. I think this one here is from, uh, from a customer in Texas, actually, that we bumped into that's, um, that's, that's doing this sort of thing. And I know I've been working with Lou Manglass yeah. in um, Athens, Clark. Is that what it's called? Somewhere in Athens, a, some, Athens I'm not familiar yeah, with it. I read it. Yeah, like, municipal uh, security there. And so people are making progress with this. We look, we're looking forward to working more with Intergraph to streamline this even further. But the bottom line is um, the early reports are that using FME as a conduit can greatly simplify that workflow that, needs, that, that folks doing CAD need to do to go from their corporate GIS into the CAD system. Um, as well, we, we said edits. FME has a nice change detector inside of it, so we can tell when things change. If you, re, if you give us an original version of a file and then the modified version, we can, just like that, tell you what's different. Yeah. So um, That's great. And that particular workspace that we showed there was really focusing on the street center lines. So any updates in the GIS, the street center lines, out to the CAD system, um, we can do that and put it in a format that GeoMedia can, uh, the IMAP editor can make use of and put back into the CAD systems. Uh, the other thing we can also look, be looking at doing is, is helping with the ICAD edits, uh, making that round trip back to the GIS right. if there's any uh, points of interest collected in the CAD system, that sort of stuff. So, um, so we're, bottom line is we're, we're really anxious to continue working to improve the support for that. And uh, if anybody's online that would be interested in that, please drop us a line. We'd be happy to work with you to figure out how we can best complement those situations. I guess I'm asking them to send us a question. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, looks like Dale's got another uh, poll question for you. Uh, so, yeah, having seen all this stuff, um, that we've done today, we just thought we'd ask you, what, when you think about the kind of challenges that you have to uh, deal with, what are the, the main ones that, that, that are uh, bothering you? Is it format issues? Is it data model issues? Um, and of course, uh, coordinate systems, actually, that comes up quite a bit, too. Um, in FME, we didn't talk about it, but FME can do 2D and 3D coordinate reprojection uh, pretty much worldwide. So data model, I'm not surprised. Uh, we have a slide that we used to have um, up all the time that says it's the data model, stupid. A little uh, tip of the hat to our uh, James Carville. Um, but look at that. It's neck and neck between format. Oh, data model just ever so slightly ahead. But this kind of drives home the fact that when you think about FME, you shouldn't think of us as only a format solver. That's the right. data model is at least as important or more than format if these um, results are to be believed. So. So anyway, and actually look at coordinate systems are a fairly significant yeah. challenge as well. So we share those results, I guess. Yeah, so I think I'll, uh, I'll see if we get a couple more people to answer. I'd like to mention about coordinate systems. When we first started to support GeoMedia and FME, it took us, I think, three months to support the Access Warehouse, and we didn't support coordinate systems at that point within the Access Warehouse. It took us four months after that to get the coordinates. Just the coordinate systems alone was bigger than the whole thing. Wow. Because it's, uh, Geomedia has a very sophisticated coordinate system model, and it took us a lot of effort to get that, to get that right. So there, there's the results. So data model is, uh, again, very important, and that kind of is some proof of what our hunch has been um, for a long time. Okay, okay that's well, great. thanks very much for helping us out there. All right, well, I think next we're going to slide into some Geomedia 3D for Dale. Yeah, I'll just um, mention some things. We've got some screenshots here because we are starting to, uh, I know uh, the plane is starting to touch down for William and Kate, so we do need to get <laughs> be mindful of that. So um, we just wanted to mention that, uh, that if you're thinking of going into Geomedia 3D, one of the challenges would be um, how you're going to get data into there. And we've been working with Intergraph on this and a part of FME actually comes with Geomedia 3D for bringing stuff in. And we can take data from a whole bunch of different places and make it into 3D even if you didn't have 3D already. So if you go to the next slide here, um, we can take ingredients like this. And uh, these are just some photos um, of buildings. Literally, we went around Surrey here and took photos of buildings um, from the side. That's actually my old house. The, the top uh, left one brings a little <laughs> tear to my eye every time I see this slide. Um, and there's are some building footprints. In this case, it was some data from our good friends in Yavla, Sweden. Um, we've been doing lots of work in Sweden. And that, they, um, 
and let's, let's go to the next slide here. Um, they hired some suite to go around uh, door to door, I guess, and measure the height of each building. And you can see there, these are in meters. That's at the bottom of the eaves and the top of the roof peaks with a huge tech new and huge tech foo. Um, boy, I should give a shirt that somebody can translate that for me uh, from Sweden. I'm sure with the pronunciation it will be easy for them. But anyway, you got this kind of data that actually has heights in it. And so then we can take this and extrude it and end up with the ortho photo, putting the roofs on and making a pretty good simulation. Now here's a series of screenshots of the resulting data set in GeoMedia 3D. So we come in closer and again we're, we're randomly applying the textures to the sides of the buildings and you know what? It doesn't even look that bad. So um, the roofs are coming off of the ortho photo and so that's uh, you know, fairly believable from that point of view too. And so I think just wanted to let people know that um, that that's possible. Um, if, you're, if you have interesting data, you can make 3D. We've had customers create 3D models of, um, of actually nuclear power plants that are so old they don't have a proper model. And by using bits and pieces of uh, the information that they can gather from Excel spreadsheets and other places, actually create a 3D model. And once you get it into an environment like this, you can start to do some interesting things. All right. OK. Um, so I think we're pretty much uh, to the end of the line here. Yep, we've got a little bit on the FME server that we want to just point out and talk about a little bit and introduce you to it. Um, FME server is a scalable platform and offers flexible spatial data distribution and loading services. And what it does, it's a, it's a platform that sits on uh, an application, sits on a server. It provides uh, web services for the wider audience. Um, but the great thing about it is anything you do in FME desktop, Creating these workspaces can be published up to the FME server, and you can utilize the power of a, a server to, to expand uh, either processing power for internal jobs that you might have to do, or you can distribute your data, or you can create some services that will allow you to load data up, do some validation on it before it gets to the core GIS system, um, basically automating some of your processes. So you got this fancy animation here, do you? Yeah, yeah that's right. So, so we've got uh, a group of desktop users that have been happily working along, doing uh, all their manual tasks and running these workspaces. Maybe they got some console uh, tasks running. Um, and then along comes FME Server, uh, where it allows us to integrate with uh, FME Server and publish some uh, workspaces down. I guess I clicked too many clicks there. Um, and then, you know, run these jobs on the FME servers. Right, uh, so basically those folks on the desktop very easily push those things down to the server. Now they're grinding on the server and people can consume them. Yep. And so we can see everything going out to the masses. So for example, we talked about how we could take frame data and go to say PDF or KML. That can be done on the desktop, but you could also make that into a web service so that the anybody in your organization who doesn't necessarily have any of this software installed goes to a website hits a couple buttons, bang, gets a little extract down, and they're seeing it inside of Google Earth. That's right. There's a good example on our uh, FMEpedia website for FME server. There's um, a playground there for, uh, for some you know, examples of where we go into the Vancouver area and clip some data out and, and download that information. Um, so here's some examples of the web services that uh, come uh, along with it. Um, we have the data distribution, uh, whereas the data download service allows you to uh, to communicate with FME server to pull down data. We've got live uh, data streaming, so KML network links, that sort of stuff, where we can provide PDF. CDFs, provide live links. And then, uh, as I mentioned, the upload and validation, the data upload service, where we can actually have contractors out in the field collecting data, building a CAD file, sending it up to this service. It gets validated. Maybe there's problems with CAD files. They get a notification back right away. They make the changes. They resubmit it, and then all of a sudden, they know they can send it off to uh, or ingest it into the main GIS system. And and then uh, the other part uh, of this is the job submitter service, and th that really allows us to um, just offload the po processing power from our laptop or desktop, where we might be using FME Desktop to author these things. Push them up to the server, where we can take uh, power of the uh, the extra RAM, the CPU, make use of processing these larger data sets. The other thing around that is that there's a whole scheduling system in there too, so that if you have jobs you want to run every Friday at midnight, you can have them reliably done on a server as opposed to hoping that the person remembers to kick that job off before they go home or whatever ad hoc things might have been going on on desktops. And I'll also just tie, one last thing, it isn't any talk about FME server unless we say clip, zip, and ship. 
and um, that relates to the data distribution side of things. And um, and you can use FME Server as a companion to GeoMedia Web Map. Yeah, we'll just log in here very quickly and show uh, show some of the information here. So if we want to do a data download, we got a sample here. We can run this. This is a workspace that's been published up here by desktop, and we can run that. And this is uh, this is where now we can just click on this right and download the zip file. Okay. So um, as we mentioned, that can be used with GeoMedia Web Map. So we'll just go back to here and um, let's see how we're going to do that. Okay. There Sorry. we go. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, it lets you you. Um, Add a, add a data download service so that whatever you're looking at within the web map environment, that means you can bring that part, cut that part right out. That's right. You might be able to extend the web map to make use of the GDO uh, to uh, to get at other data that's not in the native GMedia uh, or GMedia formats, and, and and publish that out to your your customer base. Okay. Well, I, I think the airplane is just making its final uh, approach to the landing strip there in Prince Edward Island or wherever it is that William Cade are coming to. So we should wrap this up. But um, hopefully you, you learned some things today uh, on this. I know I did. And um, so it's, it's been great. If you want to follow up and continue, you can, of course, take a, a test drive of FME. That's available off our website at uh, safe.com. Just go there and you can grab that. We also be happy to do a web demo if you want to kind of expand on any of these things. We will be getting back to all of you that ask questions with some follow-up emails as well. Great. And um, oh, wait a minute! There's something they can win besides my uh, couple of T-shirts. Is that right? Is so that right? Is that? Oh well. So I guess I have a poll here. Oh, um, you do. So um, let us know if you'd like to uh, have a chance at a free seat in any of these classes. Um, so. Uh, People are, uh, are responding there, but uh, thanks very much for, for tuning in today. Uh, while those are, polls are coming in, we'll... Um, I wanted to bring up the SEF. If, uh, did we discuss that? Uh, we didn't actually. There are winners. Um, Is there? Okay. Let me see. Uh, on the SEF side, what was I told here? Okay, so Christina Bach, Jim... Post and Scott McIntyre knew that it stood for standard exchange format. Well, there you which go. Which is a pretty good name, really. Uh, <laughs> so you know, that's if only it really was a standard, that would be uh, that would be something. So now for my next trick, I got to try to figure out how I can turn off this poll. Uh, <laughs> okay, there we go. So let's see if that comes back. All right. Well, um, thanks very much for expressing that interest. If there's any other questions, please um, zing them in now to the questions, and we've only got a couple minutes left to. Uh, Till we wrap up, yeah. And we will stay on uh, online longer to uh, to take more. If there's discussion, ones to continue. Those that aren't rushing to a TV set to tune into the arrival of the royal couple in Canada. So uh, yeah, we got questions coming in. So are there any? I'm going to just put uh, put my friend Ryan on the spot. Any uh, zinger questions that had you stumped today, Ryan? Well, yes, there were. Let me just go back and find them. Okay, so Ryan's going to Ryan's going to. Uh, Holler it out for us. Robin's got one. Someone wanted to know about doing spatial datum transformations. So I don't know. Datum transformations. Yeah. You're talking about probably horizontal and vertical datums. Uh, we just love that. It's safe. Um, so that's that's about NAD 83 to um, to NAD 27 and a variety of these in Europe as well. I remember actually a T-shirt that I saw once that I'd really like to get that said NAD 83, NAD 27 because shift happens. Um, <laughs> so in any case, yes, we do all those kinds of things with FME, including in the newest FMEs, even vertical datum shifts. That means um, kind of what do you think sea level actually is and geoid adjustments for heights. So that's done in FME with a thing called a reprojector or a CS map reprojector. And yes, as part of this, we do a very thorough job of that. Um, pretty good coverage even worldwide. Um, for those, and I know Intergraph is a very international company, so in, in the far corners of the earth, um, we do a good job of those things. So that's a great one, Robin. How about you, Ryan? Uh, this question was, does that mean support the GTEC data server, which allows the display of GTEC data in GeoMedia? Well, we can connect with the FME GDO going through that uh, route to the uh, GTEC data model, yes. Yeah, so that, that's one way of doing it, yeah. Oh, so yeah, so oh, sorry, the question. question. Oh, okay. So okay. well, or Steve can just say. Yeah, the, the question was the question was can we uh, connect to the GTEC uh, data model through any of our readers and writers? And the answer to that is definitely yes, we can. 
someone actually, I'm just going to pick one that just got sent in by, by someone asking, um, how does the relationship with Intergraph come into play with Hexagon and SAFE? But the interesting thing for SAFE is that we actually have a relationship with almost all of those Hexagon companies uh, prior. In fact, um, with Leica Geosystems, we've had an OEM with them since 1997. I remember trekking over the, hill, the Alps in, uh, in Switzerland to, you know, with an FME on my backpack. Uh, and a St. Bernard dog came out and greeted me and uh, signed a deal with me there. So seriously, we've had a deal with them for a long, long time. And with Erdos, I instantly learned how to pronounce Erdos correctly. Uh, it's not Erdas, it's Erdos. So let's get that right, it's safe. Um, so anyway, we have a relationship with them as well. So we think it's a great opportunity for us to continue to work more closely with all these companies and, uh, and continue to add value to, to them. So that was a great question. Um, thanks, Eric. So I don't know, we have any more? Oh, Eric's happy, that's good. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. Now we're going to stay online here to take any more of your questions. Uh, but uh, we have a little summary slide here, and um, you know this okay. is a, webinar is going to be recorded, so you can. I'm pleased to see that they're using my eight-track tape mock-up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. that's awesome. I had some fun with that quite a while ago. Um, yeah, I, I don't think many people at Safe here know what an eight-track is, or yeah, I know <laughs> one. <laughs> Probably not many of our uh, listeners. We could have a whole other webinar on. Uh, old uh, recording technology, uh, but since we're a format company, we have to support everything. Uh, can, somebody's going to write in, can FME read 8-track tapes? <laughs> because they have an old version of some um, 70s music that they'd like to lift off. Probably the answer would be no, yeah. but, uh, but if there's a business case, as Ryan says, we would consider it. So, um, no, thanks very much for tuning in. All right, thank you guys, and uh, hello to all the people at Intergraph that I have worked with. It's good to see you online. Yeah, and so uh, we'll be in touch with some follow-up and some email. If you want to listen to this again, uh, go ahead, and uh, we'd be happy to work with you in the future. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and keep the questions on coming, and, uh, and we'll hang around here until, until there's none. Yeah, and, then, and even after that, if you still have questions that come to mind uh, yeah. over the weekend when you're having a beer, just uh, send it in to support at safe.com. And actually, it is uh, a weekend for both Canadians and Americans likely to have a beer at some point. That's right. But hopefully not while you're lighting the fireworks. No, so no. So we don't encourage that. But in any case, enjoy your long weekend. No matter where you are in North America, you're probably getting a long weekend one way or another. That's so right. take care. All the best, and we'll see you on the next webinar.